your glory is what we desire to experience, Lord. You are all that we long for, Jesus. Your presence is all we long for, Lord. Your presence is what will make a difference in us. Your presence is what will transform us. Your presence is what will make our situations to bow.
want to walk by ourselves, we need your presence, God. No, your presence, God. We can sing more boldly, your presence. that you're carrying in your heart but as long as you have been found in his presence your solution has been found whatever burdens they are laid down at his presence in the presence of the Lord there is liberty even without anyone laying hands on you even without anyone knowing your need the Bible tells us that he knows our needs even before we say a word so I want to encourage you this morning. Open up to him and tell him I love your presence. Release your spirit. Do not be, do not be hard hearted. Open up your spirit to him and tell him thank you for your presence. Because I know here at your presence my needs are met. Here at your presence I get my freedom. Here at your presence. I get my peace, I get my joy, I get my healing back, I get restoration, I get my strength back in your presence. There is liberty in his presence. Oh! 
presence in your presence there is being set free in your presence there is joy in your presence there is peace so whatever every soul is lacking is available in your presence this morning that's why we lift our voices to you Lord We release these problems, these worries, these anxieties that are causing us sleepless nights. Release them in His presence. In His presence, even mountains melt like wax. In, he, in His presence, there is no darkness, that even darkness is light to Him. So in faith, open up your heart and release it to Him. 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 Just open up your heart to him. For there is freedom in his presence. There is newness of life in his presence. There is transformation in his presence.
This is the prayer of our hearts. Kutoka milioni mwetu tutatamani tukae na wewe. Tutatamani kutembea na wewe. We know we are not perfect. We've got a lot of flaws and flaws and faults, oh Lord. We know that we fail you many many times. We know that we fall and rise and fall and rise. But we have this one desire, Lord. That we will stay with you. You in us and us in you. That your presence will not depart from us. That you will fill us with your spirit, oh God. That every day, every hour, every moment of our lives, we will be together with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, see our hearts this morning. See the desires of our souls this morning. We know it's not an easy walk, it's not an easy journey. But in you we are confident that we will make it to the end. Father, I pray this morning that your presence will continue walking with us. That you will lead our ways, O oh God. When we walk with you, even the way we think will change. Our perception of things, our perception of everything that is happening around us will change. We desire, Lord, that you will grant us this prayer. As individuals have prayed, and as a church, we pray that, Lord, your presence will walk with us. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and we worship. Amen. 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 Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good to us. We have seen his goodness and we have come to declare that there is no any other God. There is no other God. Hakuna. Mungu mwingine ambaye anatupatia ushindi. We are declaring this morning nani kama yawe. Nani kama yawe mshindi wa washindi. I request us to be upstanding this morning even as we celebrate the Lord with a clap and a shout because he is a good God.
God even here at the Good News Mission Church in this very beautiful afternoon. I request that we take our blessed seats as we continue with our service this beautiful day that the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in him. Let me pick something. I think there's some wonderful things here that I need to be saying. And which is the first one? Or maybe I have changed the first one, has I? Has the first one changed? Probably. <laughs> I don't think it has changed. Even my name has not yet changed. My name is still Maureen. Most people in this city prefer calling me by the second name, Mutile, and I am blessed of the Lord. The Lord has been my savior. He has been my deliverer. And I am a testimony that the Lord is good to people. He has been good to me. And I know even you who is following us online from wherever part of the world that you are following us from, you have also experienced the goodness of the Lord just as we have done the same here at the Good News Mission Church. And straight to our very first announcement that has not yet changed because the Lord gave us this word from the beginning of this year and we are still running with it. I don't know. I will ask him one of these days. <laughs> By the grace of God, we are still pursuing and overtaking because God has assured us that when we do that, by his grace, by his power, we shall recover. And I know by this time, this is the fifth month of this year, 2022, you have seen God helping you to pursue. And I think by now you have seen some of the things that you have been able to recover after you have overtaken things that were really running, but God gave you speed and you were able to overtake. And for that reason, you recovered something. I think one of these days we should be having a session for testimonies so that people can testify how the Lord has given them the ability to overtake. And now they have evidence of it by what they have recovered. We really appreciate each and every one of us who has been able to come for this service physically. We thank God because you are here and that you have also been able to come on the time that we mentioned on Sunday. Can you please appreciate yourself and also your neighbor on behalf of the Good News Mission Church? It is wonderful when we come to the house of the Lord and observe the time. And we continue to thank God because of the great things that he is doing in our midst. We are very grateful because of the students that are usually in our midst, although sometimes they disappear for good reasons because they are going to school. And we thank God because he has kept them safe. He has been with them and he has given us a few days to see them before they go back to school. We thank God because of our very own sign language interpreter in front here, Binti Sam, she has been away. Can you please appreciate her with a clap? We bless the Lord even for each and every student in our midst. Thank you because of Lucy and who else? And Maureen and who else? and Wambo. Wow. It is beautiful that the Lord has enabled them to be in our midst, though maybe for a short period of time, but we, we can bear with that. Very soon we will have them for a very long time. Now, this is the last Sunday of the month of May. Have you seen the goodness of the Lord? Have you experienced the goodness of the Lord in this month of May? Personally, I have, and as a ministry, we want to appreciate and thank God because of what he has been doing in our midst, even as we continue seeing his goodness as days go ahead in this year. So by his grace, we have been able to see the last Sunday for this month, and we have seen his power working King in us. And because we are doing a countdown, <laughs> a countdown, I realize people love countdowns when it is the end of the year. Apo wakia sabiwa seconds. Oh, I, I remember one time when I was in, in primary school, I guess, 
tukikaribia kufanya mtihani we used to <laughs> write the dates up on the board <laughs> the countdown the big countdown i don't know how many days remaining so we then go because the days remaining for us in this premise are becoming lesser and lesser by day and i know one of these fine days one of these fine days the blessed servant of the lord the anointed one in this in this service, in this church, in this ministry, in a season like this, I know he has good words. Those words, he will be saying them very soon. Alisema soon. So, mimi ndasema too soon. Mimi ndasema too soon. We shall be knowing about our settlement to our next home from this place. However, that one is soon. What we will say in a time that is now <laughs> is that our MPSA pay bill 4043755 is not changing anytime soon. <laughs> it is still the same one and you can go to it and you can make your contributions. You can give towards the Nuru place even as we prepare to settle in our next home very soon. And because of that settling in a new place, in a new Physical location, we have to continue saying physical location. What to sema kuhama in Sumbua lakini? I think this kuhama of ours will be very exciting. I was remembering the day we, we got the announcement that we shall be moving from this place. I think it was in three months' time we were singing this song that we can only imagine what it will be like. So this song is still in my heart and I know God is faithful to make sure that these things that we can only imagine, his word says that he is able to give us much more than we have asked for. And I know we have been asking for, for a lot of things concerning this new home as we have been fasting and praying every Thursday from the evening up to the evening of Friday. And I know this God is faithful. And I know we have been imagining. Maybe if I could ask some few people here, they can tell us. Wow, I'm going to imagination, Ghani, about the place that we are going. But one thing that I can assure you is that when God gave us that song that we can only imagine, he meant it. And this imagination is going to become realistic very, very soon. So we really pass our thanks to each and every one of us who has been participating in this Thanksgiving. This, this week we have been giving thanks because of what God is doing to us concerning our new settlement, our new settlement. It is very exciting and I am not ceasing to say that the fasting is ongoing. This fasting will continue until we are given <laughs> other instructions. On Sunday, is it on Sunday or the other Sunday, you were talking about further instructions that were to be given by the Holy Spirit. So this fasting is still ongoing this Thursday from the evening of Thursday up to the evening of Friday. And this, that Friday, when you hear Friday, what rings in your mind is that from 6 p.m. to the hours of about 8 p.m., the doors are open here for each one who is available, even those that are watching us online. By the way, there are people who come to pray with us here on Fridays, and they are not members of this church. So even you who is watching us, you are very much welcome to join us even this Friday as we continue to call on the name of the Lord, the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 10. I think it's from verse verse 11 there about it talks about this God that we can call on he says that everyone who calls on his name he shall be saved anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved and the opportunity is open here every Friday that you are given a chance to come and call upon the name of the Lord so that you can continue to experience his salvation every day now we have new people, new people. Others were with us here during their blaze worship experience, and they really ablazed us. <laughs> they were our visitors, but we were ablazed by their presence. And I want you to continue to be ablazed by the very beautiful presence of Samuel Muriuki and Caroline Muriuki as they come here and appreciate our visitors. I think they know all of them by name. I'm very poor with names, but so far I know there is someone by the name 
Wambu. Can you please put your hands together for Sam? For Sam. Oh, you have changed your name. <laughs> My name is still the same. Thank you. Let's appreciate the Lord for Maureen once again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are so privileged and honored to have visitors in the house. We want to thank each and every one of you. And specifically, allow me to thank Stanley. Thank you, Stanley, for coming. God bless you so much. And may the Lord minister to you this wonderful day in the name of Jesus. I mean, I'm seeing something else here. And I know we're going somewhere. And I know that the Lord is with us. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. We also want to thank our online family in the name of Jesus from whatever part of the world you're watching us from. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep ministering to you. Amen. Without further ado, because of the interest of time, please let us all rise on our feet and clap our hands and uh, celebrate the Lord for the man of God, Pastor Moses Mashigi, as he brings forth the word of God. Welcome, sir. Amen. We can have our seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, and perhaps you can say hi to your neighbor. Do not sit to a neighbor that you have not said hi to. Uh, please uh, make sure that you say hi. Yeah, and um, I would like us to put our hands together and appreciate Beth for the good work she's doing here. Let's put our hands together. Yeah, it's the first time we have sign interpreter, and uh, we have um, Stanley, who is deaf, but very gifted. Amen. And um, so uh, Beth is helping me to preach to Stanley. And um, it's beautiful, right? So, and uh, we are a young church with many firsts. That everyone is somebody. Some, eh? Everyone is someone. Amen? So that is what we, even if you go to our website, everyone is someone. Am I correct? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Everyone is someone. And so, including our brother Stanley here, uh, it's like uh, seven or so years before I saw him. But uh, seeing him is such a blessing. And uh, it's such a beautiful thing. Also, it's so happy, uh, or I'm very happy to see each one of you. It's so good to see each one of you. Can you appreciate yourself in Jesus' name for coming? What a beautiful thing. And also, we are happy that we have um, people that we did not have them on Sunday, and they're here. May the Lord bless you. Glory to Jesus. Uh, this wonderful morning, because of our time, uh, I would like to share um, a passionate uh, sermon that I have really wanted to, to share with you. And this is our that Sunday that we are sharing about the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been a journey from the point of knowing who is the Holy Spirit and uh, getting to know what is the work of the Holy Spirit. And today I want us to speak about baptism by or through the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And uh, as much again, I will be speaking from my heart as we share the word of God. That means that uh, I may not follow the written notes. Um, these are notes that I have prepared, not that I have uh, picked from somewhere. And so the reason why I want to share from the heart is because there, um, there are structures that I would like to, to bring forth that will help you to understand the baptism through the Holy Spirit and through the fire. Praise the Lord. So the title for those who are taking notes is the baptism by the Holy Spirit and by fire. We're going to read a few scriptures. The first scripture we're going to read is Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. Um, and we're going to read Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. Are we there? Yeah, please, uh, Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. It was a conversation that was being um, shared by John the Baptist speaking about Jesus Christ. And he spoke a few words that I would like us to pick up. And these words we read from second part of John, uh, I mean Luke chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says, John answered them all, I baptized you, I baptize you with water, 
but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I want you to speak to your neighbor and tell them that when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Can you speak to your neighbor? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Praise the Lord. So these were words that were spoken by John the Baptist. And he spoke about Jesus, that when Jesus comes, he's going to give you two things. The first thing is that he's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Every believer is required to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. When you look in the Bible, when Paul went to, um, to, to Samaria in uh, Acts chapter 8, I mean not Paul's, but Simon. He went to Samaria in Acts chapter 8 and verse from verse 4. If you read, let's go to verse 14 just to pick that part. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there at, that they may or might receive the Holy Spirit. Every believer is required to have, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, the baptism by Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit is a requirement. It's not an option. Praise the Lord. It's a requirement. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the work of Jesus was to open the door for the Holy Spirit to come in you. So by receiving Christ Jesus, there is something else that you need that is very important. And the something else is called baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Why? Why do you need the Holy Spirit? One, we say that the Holy Spirit is an, an encourager. He's a teacher. So when you receive Jesus Christ, you have shifted yourself from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Simply what you have done, you have declared war. You have declared war with all evil spirits, demons, and Satan. You have declared that from today and forward, I'm not of this kingdom because I belong to this kingdom. And anyone who is in the kingdom of God is a threat and, and an enemy of Satan. And when you receive Christ Jesus, you need an empowerment. You need to be encouraged. You need to be taught. You need to have the Holy Spirit who will guide you on how you wage war. Praise the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit will come and reveal deep mysteries, the things that are happening in the spiritual realm concerning your own life and your destiny. Praise the Lord. And so when the apostles heard that Samaria had received Christ Jesus, they did a follow-up that they may go there and pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Let me demystify something. Salvation, when you say that I'm born again, does not mean automatically you receive the Holy Spirit. But many times you find people who, who uh, become born again receiving the Holy Spirit, but not all the time. There are people who are born again, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen? People that are born again, they're in the church, they are years old, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. They are just people without the power, the enabling power of God. They don't have a guide. They don't have a counselor. They are just there. And that is why you find that life in salvation sometimes becomes difficult because you have no one to help you. Yes, you're born again. You were washed by the blood of Jesus. But who is your helper in this journey? The helper is someone who will tell you that something will happen to you or you should not do this, you should do this 
other thing. Praise the Lord. So, John the Baptist said that a time is coming that you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Praise the Lord. Now, people are asking, how are you baptized in fire? We are coming there. But the first place to start is, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Many people will say yes, and many other people will say no. Because they don't have a distinct way of knowing that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. There are several aspects when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are manifestations that you're going to show. Amen? It's just like uh, a lady who conceives. We know that the process of conception and pregnancy will grow until they are able to deliver, right? And through that journey, there are several things that, do, uh, that happen to them. Several structural changes that happen to their body. Several uh, inner uh, changes that happen to their systems. And among the most things that are seen is the bulging of the belly, right? Why? Because there is life, there is someone growing inside them, in their womb. And so when you receive the Holy Spirit, it is the same. There are several things that start to manifest along the way. They may not manifest all, but there are several things that manifest. And this is the clear way to know whether you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he needs to enter into all that says they're born again. If you are born again, the first thing that you need is the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Why? How many people, many times they feel like being born again is boring somehow? Like you're tired. Like, should I do these routines? How many people sometimes they feel that? The good news mission is a church of openness. Right? We don't, we don't go saying, Uliona linua mkono. Anangaro. No, we don't say that. How many people feel a bit tired? You know, the routine. How many people feel like sometimes when I send a Sunday, moja tuwa jibambe? Pasia baki church. Right? Praise the Lord. Tiredness. Sometimes when you don't have the Holy Spirit, there are things that makes you feel tired. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who inspires you to do things that the world will not do. He inspires you to pray. Praise the Lord. I know that we are still in that stage where prayers, we only pray through understanding, through our mind. We pray from the point of the words, the things that we can relate. But do you know that there is the an, an, an enablement that comes by the Holy Spirit where you find that you can pray and you pray and you pray and you pray and people will be wondering because there is another power that enables you to pray so prayers by itself is so tiresome it's work you're fighting against forces until you have someone who enables you to pray I can tell you that your prayers will remain the same it's a prayer of necessity, of need. You just pray what you need and the problems you're facing and your expectations. But when the Holy Spirit comes, remember we said that he's the one who reveals. And he can reveal many things, mysteries. And when these mysteries are revealed, you realize that it's a matter of life and death. And so you give yourself into prayer to counter the things that you have seen. Praise the Lord. If today you know that um, the enemy is lining up many things that are aimed to harm you and to kill you, and you know that tomorrow is the day, I tell you that you're going to pray like Jesus prayed until the droplets of your sweat are the droplets of blood. Praise the Lord. Jesus was God and he knew that his day of suffering has come. And so he prayed with the earnestness because he had seen the suffering. What about you if you can see today what will happen to you? Praise the Lord. 
There are times that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that the enemy is planning so much harm into your health. Amen? And so you start to pray and to intercede because of the days to come. Bwana asifiwe san. I've heard many testimonies. Watu wakisema ya kwamba niliona nime kwa ndoto nimeomba Mungu nimeona kwa ndoto ya kwamba nimekatwa mguu. Sikuwa na mguu mmoja and then they are like lakini niko na zote mbili. Thank God it was a dream. Amen. How many of you you have dreamt something very scary and 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 you woke up and you said thank God it's a dream. Many of you but when you have the Holy Spirit, he reveals things. And when he reveals, I want you to know that these are not just things that happen within a short period of time. They can happen even in 10 years. You find the enemy striking you with sicknesses and diseases that can make you get amputated of your leg. But you never took it seriously. But how can you receive these revelations? By being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You are required to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to come over you to empower you. Why? Because a man is weak and he cannot be able to withstand himself against the forces of the Spirit. Satan is not a weak spirit. He is weak to those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. But he is not weak when you are in the flesh. He's able to make sure that he steal you, he kill you, and destroy you. He's able. He's more than able. Praise the Lord. And so when we are speaking about fighting the forces of evil, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Unaitaji kuwa umebatizwa katika roho mtakatifu. Praise the Lord. We are going to see how you receive or you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized. I want to clarify very well that you can operate 10 years without the Holy Spirit as a believer. But your life will not be productive at all. Your life will remain a life of fear, a life of discouragement. And this is what is happening to the church of Christ today. People are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is why they fight, they backstab, they speak gossips, they do all manner of things that those who are not born again are doing. Because there is no differentiation that sets them apart. They are just the same. You are struggling with many things because the Holy Spirit who is, who is supposed to help you is not within you. Praise the Lord. You are struggling with fatigue when it comes to the things of God. I believe we have many people here, when they start to read the word of God, they start to sleep. Or they get that you are distracted. You are having the word of God here and you are having your Facebook on the other side here. Unasikia tutu? Kwanza unangalia. Wow. Ah, ni like, ni comment. Na kwa nini haja love, ame like. Then you go back and you say, Simon the sorcerer. Then, unaona ka notice kame tokea hapo WhatsApp. Ni Sam, ametuma list ya a blaze worship. Unasema, oh my. Sita kwanza niona what Sam is doing. Then, unasema, thank you. Unarudi kwa neno. Before long, unayeka Bible chini. You're tired. You have no discipline. And the discipline comes through the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. The reason why you find people saying that I'm bored. Is because they don't have the Holy Spirit who enables them. Praise the Lord. The Bible says for the things of God is foolishness to those who are perishing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 25. Amen. Uh, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Now, let me tell you, the things that we are doing here is stupidity to many people. How can a whole grown-up man with beards like me come and dance before the Lord? How can, how can I be found in the house of the Lord, lying here prostrate, praying to the Lord? 
How can you find a whole man crying out? Don't they have manners? Right? Why can't they be, you know, wastarabu? Because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot really see what people have seen that makes them to cry out to the Lord. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be submerged in him and him overwrapping you, operating within the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, there are things, leave alone speaking in tongues, there are things when the Holy Spirit revealed to you, you become different. Praise the Lord. Why are people so afraid to share Jesus, but they can share their businesses? I can come to you and tell you that I, uh, this is my business card. I can come to you and, 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 and speak about what I'm doing. And you know, I'm going to be very eloquent because I've planned about it. It's so easy, right? When you're making a sale, but wait until it's sharing Jesus. You're like a suspect. Hey, what will they say? The way they are wearing, the way they are decent, they don't look like they need Jesus. Right? Why are you afraid? Because there is no enabling person that empowers you to share Jesus. You need the baptism for you to do some things that may look basic, but they are not. Praise the Lord. From the things of the word of God, how you read the word of God. Let me tell you, there are people who read the word of God, but they don't get revelation. Their minds are blinded. You have your, your Bible, but your Bible is just another book. Praise the Lord. How many times do we read it? It is the life. It's our life. That is the one that will, will snatch you out of all fires. The trials of Satan and evil spirits. But how many times do we read? And we know. Tunafaa kuikula kama dawa. Amen? Asubuhi kijikomoja. Jioni wengine wanakunywa dawa za four times a day. Praise the Lord. But the word of God, it, you can only read the word of God if you have the Holy Spirit. I was listening to Ehagen. Uh, uh, He's a preacher uh, who used to preach greatly. And he quoted something that I was like, oh God, I need another baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, one time that G Jesus appeared to him in person. And so they had a conversation and along the way, a demon came in between them. And it blocked Jesus from communicating with him. At that point, you know, he was like, why will Jesus not cast out this demon uh, against blocking what Jesus is saying? I cannot hear. But then, he said, in the name of Jesus, I command you, evil spirit, to leave. And that demon left. And then Jesus said, if you did not command it to leave, I will not have commanded it because that power is delegated to you. So I gave you the power, so I delegated. It's your work. Then he said some few words that really caught me. Not about the Jesus and all that. He said, when they were talking with Jesus, they were asking, he, uh, I mean, he was asking Jesus, why will you not? And Jesus said, I could not. He did not say, I will not. I could not. So he, kind of like Jesus don't have the power. And so he was kind of like confused and he said, Jesus, if you back up your statement with your word, I will believe you. Three verses. Because the word of God says where there is a testimony of two or three. And then Jesus said, not only three times, but four times, I will back up this statement. And now uh, Hagen said, I've read the New Testament 250 times over and over and over again. If you just mention that word, I don't need to go to the Bible. I know it by my spirit. I, I have quenched myself. And then I said 250 times over and how many times have you read the Bible? Once. New Testament, 27 books. Once. Like from Genesis, I mean from Matthew chapter 1 to Revelation 22. How many? 
Si unaona tunahitaji kubatizwa tena? Sisi wote hapa tumbukizwe tena kwa roho. Amen. Maana kama tunaamini huyu Yesu and we have not read the whole section that speaks about him. Si unaona tuko na shida? Amen. Is it that we don't read? No, I know you read. Let me ask you another question. How many people read um, a book that is called um, Harry Potter? Anyone who have read Harry Potter? I can see one boy, you're smiling. Do you know How many volumes? It is 1,000 and something pages, right? 1,000. And I read it in three weeks because it was fascinating. In three weeks, I had done Harry Potter. All of it in Form 3. How many pages are the New Testament? Amen. Who enables us to read and to dwell in the Word? The Holy Spirit. Jesus said, let's go to Acts chapter 1. And we read two sections. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 up to verse 8 and then we go to Acts chapter 2. The Bible says on one occasion when, while he was eating with them he gave them this command do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So Jesus did not finish what John said. He said with the Holy Spirit. Because now when the Holy Spirit comes, he baptizes you with a second baptism called the baptism by or with fire. Praise the Lord. So you receive the first one to, qual to qualify you for the second. And so Jesus said you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Praise the Lord. What will you receive? Power when the Holy Spirit comes. Not energy, not strength, but power. Praise the Lord. Not energy. Simu sisimuko. Eh? Energy. Have you ever been very hungry and then you get um, a power drink like um, your monster or something and you feel like you're very strong? Wait until a few minutes again you're very hungry, right? So, he's not giving you some, some power drink here. He's giving you power. Amen? When the Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When you get power, what will you do? You will become a witness. A witness. So the first thing that we know that you have received Christ Jesus is witnessing, sharing Jesus. And it becomes, you know many people share about Jesus because of their pastor. Amen. Let me tell you, frankly, many people share about Jesus because pastor I'm a drug. Do you know what is dragging? Sam, can I use you as an example, Pore, Pore Sana? Um, dragging is kushika mtu hapa, una muambie, kuja, muambie, muambie. Talk to him. Na wezu kajito, wengine unashika mtu hapa sasa, na ile mbaya ni ile ya polisi hapa. Okay? Thank you. Many of us, we share Jesus because we are dragged. Una, una fuatu wa mpaka unasikia, sini ni share about uh, ni achilie tu. Unaambia watu, kuja ni? Jesus saves. Will you receive Jesus? Unaambia pasi ya watu ni vichwa ngumu. You see? Let me go. Wee baki na watu wa? But when the Holy Spirit comes, it becomes so much that, not that you are pushed, but the power that you have, you know, you cannot contain yourself. You look at someone and you see that you're very beautiful, you're handsome. I wish you can have Jesus and you will be perfect. Then you start sharing Jesus. We don't share Jesus because people have problems. 
Praise the Lord. We share Jesus because Jesus have their destiny. We are not sympathetic to people that if you don't receive Jesus, you're going to die. It's not my work. Right? It's God who sustain you. So I'm not sharing about Jesus because you're dying. I share Jesus because I know the fullness of life in Christ Jesus is beautiful, is great. So when I receive the power of the Holy Spirit, I will have that tenacity, aggressiveness to share Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, naezangalia uko percentage gani ya power. When 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 you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are kind of like charged 100% full. Your battery is full. Wengine wetu tunaenda tukitoa alarm. Ya kusema turu turu low battery. The Holy Spirit is just kadongo sana. Nikale tu kana ku sustain kuja kanisani tu, umeboeka tu, nafika kanisani hivi unaangalia watu. Guy, time out kire. You know they are here. Oh my. And there are so many. Oh they are. Hiyo ndio ka power umebakishia. But when you're full, oh my. You are going to explode with the desire to see people transformed in Christ Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So Jesus says, you should not leave Jerusalem. Do not leave the upper room. Praise the Lord. Until the gift of the Holy Spirit comes. But today the churches are full of people who left before the Holy Spirit came. Walisema anakawia sana. Masa ni pesa. Tusonga tukienda. So they are in the church. But they are powerless. Amen. Mchungaji anahubiri hapa na mtu anaanza kujihesabu. Huyu ananiongelea eh? eh? Najua nikimwangalia hivi naweza muwekelea ngumi moja uh, azimike. No. Unaanza kufanya imaginations. Si nikiweza rusha hii kiti anaepa. Eh? Anaskata. Funny thoughts. And you in the house of the Lord. Because you left without the Holy Spirit. You are here and you're thinking about business, not worshiping your creator and your savior. You are here and you're thinking about, about home. Yani umekaa tu hapo una kaa hivi tu. What una fikiria una contemplate about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Kumbe unapangia mtu. Like huyo jamaa aliruka. Hii mara lazima ingie box. Na uko tu hapa. It shows that you left before the Holy Spirit came. Praise the Lord. You can see when Judas left before the Holy Spirit. He started looking at Jesus from the point of money. And as I talk and you know, kulingana na venye hazina yake iko, na mimi ndio niko na mfuko ya pesa, so sintamchaji mingi, that bob. In that bob then, ilikuwa mingi alinunua land. Alikuwa ka developer mflani. Eh? Alikuwa mesema Judas real estate. After, uh, you know, brokering Jesus. Because he had no Holy Spirit. But the twelve that remained in the upper room, when they were baptized, immediately we are told that Peter stood up. And he stood and said, you people of Israel, the one that you crucified and you killed has come back to life and he ascended. And because you killed him and he was uh, the Messiah, you did sin. The Bible says in Jerusalem there were God-fearing people that had gathered. And when they were told that they have sinned, they said, what do we do? And Peter told them that you need to repent and receive Christ Jesus that you killed. And we are told at that instance, 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ. The power to evangelize, the power to speak and to share Jesus is of the first testament that you have the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you, when you received salvation, wakati uliokoka, wacha wakati ulikuja good news. Wakati uliokoka, ulikuwa na mioto aje. Ya Yesu. 
ni kesha ngapi umeenda mpaka unashangaa nilienda aje usiku unafika wanamaliza kesha saa kumi, unaanza kujiuliza kai nitarudi aje praise the lord look at how you used to be fiery because then when you received Christ Jesus there was that impact of the holy spirit but today huo unasikia kesha unafunga masikio unasema gai usingizi nayo mimi nasikia ngatu nimechoka sijui ama ni mwili yangu where is that love praise the lord lack of the holy spirit you're not baptized then jesus told them that do not leave the upper room do not leave the place that was designated for the holy spirit to come do not leave this place and leaving means do not start engaging until you have received the holy spirit hello why because when you engage you know the bible if you look at these guys um coming from you know where jesus ascended the mount of olive the bible says it was a sabbath day journey okay and um a sabbath day's journey is about one hour walk there is a law or a rule that guides the sabbath that you cannot walk beyond one hour the only place you can access is within one hour so when the bible says that and the journey was a sabbath day walk it means that they had to walk for one hour i look at this 120 people and they were running because walikuwa na fresh mind venye yesu alikuwa ametandikwa na venye alisulubiwa so i can see peter saying guys let's go back to the room akiwa mbele naona mwingine anasonga mbele wewe baki nyuma sitaki nishikwe eh venye yesu alitandikwa i cannot i cannot even speak because they did not receive the power praise the lord but when they stayed in the upper room let's go to chapter 2 from verse 1 when the day of pentecost came they were all together in one place suddenly a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that is now the baptism of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them all of them were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit enabled them Praise the Lord. Let me first tackle this part. On the day of Pentecost, we know that after Jesus was crucified and he resurrected, he stayed with the disciples for 40 days. Then Pentecost happens on 50th day from Easter. So these people went into the upper room and for the next 10 days they never left. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus rose or ascended on the 40th. The Bible says, and Jesus was with them for 40 days. But we know Pentecost happens on the 50th day after Easter. And so these guys stayed for 10 days. And what were they doing? They were transacting business, the kingdom business. You can go, uh, chapter 1 speaks about, and they said, let us choose someone to replace Judas and they appointed two men and one was picked that was called Matthias praise the Lord then they were constantly in prayer they kept on praying so how do you receive the Holy Spirit the reason why first you have to be born again is so that you may be granted the right to pray praise the Lord to be granted the right to pray. Because when you are not born again, there are only one prayer that God answers. And that prayer is that God, I have repented my sins. 
All others, praise the Lord. All others, they sound like noise before God. And that does not mean because you're not born again, you will not find food. God is not a cruel God. He will give you food. He will give you clothing. But that does not mean that he has answered your prayer. Your life is more than clothing. That is what Jesus said. It's more than food. So getting food and clothing is not a big deal. But there is more than that. Your life is more than just having a family. Praise the Lord. Your life is more than just having friends around you. And we are told, praise the Lord, that they stayed there. The first thing that you need is to receive salvation. Then after you receive salvation, you need to tally, you need to stay there and pray until you feel with the Holy Spirit. But the prayers that you make need to be guided by wisdom and understanding of what you want. Praise the Lord. Because you cannot desire the Holy Spirit that you don't know. You need to know how he operates. You need to know when he moves. You need to know when he burns inside of you. You need to understand when the Holy Spirit is upon you. And that is what they did. The Bible says in, in, in um, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, and they dwelt in the teachings of the apostles. As they stayed in the upper room, they were learning. They were, they were going through the teachings. The apostles were standing and saying, guys, according to how we've walked with the Lord, because that is when they were writing letters. According to how we've walked with the Lord. Buona si fiwe san. And so they dwelt in the teaching of the apostles. And the apostles were saying, Hatutoki hapa, tuliambio tukai wapi? Wewe wakatu naomba unaomba nini? Amen? Wadadam naomba nini? My brothers, what do you pray? Amen? Those who are married, what do you pray? And those who are not married, what do you pray? You know, the things that we pray, if we had the Holy Spirit, we'll not be praying about them. Praise the Lord. The pains, the fears, the frustrations that we pray about, if we had the Holy Spirit, we'll not pray about them. We'll pray about different things. Amen? So you need to have a hunger to pray. Unaitaji kuwa nanja kubwa, shauku kubwa katika maombi. And you need to pray one prayer if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Nijaze na roho wako mtakatifu. We read from John chapter 14 and verse 16 and the Bible says, and Jesus said that I shall not leave you like orphans. I will not leave you as helpless children. I will give you a helper who is to teach you and to reveal to you the word of God. What I have said. Praise the Lord. That is what Jesus said. So, as, as a believer, you need to start praying for the Holy Spirit. Not to speak with, with tongues only. Amen? The Holy Spirit, when he comes over you, he fills you with so much power that you forget about speaking in tongues only. Now you start to operate in the fullness of his power. Amen? You know, there are people who are just saying, God, I want to speak in tongues. You need the one who gives men utterances. Because many of us, we are praying for their gifts. Amen? Tunaomba mkate, ama tunafanya kazi yote kufrahisha yule ambaye akona mkate, badala ya yule ambaye anaweza, ama mwenye, the owner of the uh, the, the one who produces the bread. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, it's easier for you to buy a bakery than to buy all the bread. Do you get that? It's easier for you and cheaper for you to buy a bakery than to buy all the bread that are produced in that bakery. Because buying a bakery may mean some money. But buying what pro is produced all the time is too expensive because continually this bakery is, is baking bread 
Right? It's easier for you to receive the Holy Spirit than to pray and ask for the gifts. God, I want you to give me, you know, the gift of healing. You need to ask God to give you the, the giver of the gift. Then when he comes in you, he can give you according to what he wants you to have. What wengine hapa wana wanangangana nataka nguvu. Nguvu za kupeleka wapi? Unahitaji mwenye kupeana nguvu awe ndani yako. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kuna mtu ambaye kwa klasi yetu tukiwa high school alikuwa na kelele mingi sana. Until kukawa na misemo kwani mtu alimeza airtime. Ndio hanyama zangi. Praise the Lord. Mwingine akasema huyu jamani kama alimeza batteries. He never keeps quiet. Praise the Lord. You need to swallow the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You need him in you so that you may continually produce the effects of the Holy Spirit. The effects are speaking in tongues, healings, revelations, you know, the effect of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. Glory to Jesus. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit for you to operate effectively and to honor God. Otherwise, you will just become another person who is stuck in religion. Utakuna boeka kila wakati. Praise the Lord. And this is the greatest uh, problem we have. People don't want the Holy Spirit, but they want his power. So when I when I say, "Maum chungaji hana nguvu," si nguvu hatuna. When do you, you are in error? Praise the Lord. Kwani nguvu ni ni ni, ni grenade na kupea when unaenda ku kufungua na uko. Praise the Lord. No, it's not something that I na kwambi ashika. You have to carry your own power, and where does it come when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. Without the Holy Spirit, you are just another common person in, in the flesh. Amen? The revelation of God's mysteries comes by the way of the Holy Spirit. The mysteries, we are speaking about hidden truths that you need to operate effectively. Glory to Jesus. And when we speak about hidden, hidden truth, God is not so unkind that he has hidden his truth. Until you go to campus and you go through the four-year course, there are things, although they are there in the library, you can go pick books and read. But unless you go and pursue them, you will not master them. Praise the Lord. Not that they are hidden, they are there. Glory to Jesus. So what makes you that you are not able to do what other people are able? Because they have a revelation of truths about what they do. Why are you not coding? And yet I do code. It's because you have not taken time to, to learn the programming languages, right? If you learn, it will not be a mystery. Utakuwa unambia mtu fanya hivi, fanya hivi, hii code ikona shida hapa. And you are like, but now if I give you the codes, you will be seeing just funny stuff. And you are like, no. Praise the Lord. Wacha ni kaya kwa leni yangu, because you don't know. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals these mysteries. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter, three, chapter 4 in verse 21. Acts chapter 4 Let's start from 23. So this is a story when Peter was imprisoned in prison. Amen? He was in prison. And the reason why he was in prison it was because of teaching at the temple courts. And the, 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 the scribes, the Pharisees, and the high priests were not pleased. And so they took them into prison. But the angel of the Lord came and released them. And 
Here we read, after, after they were released, they went back to the same temple and they continued to preach. Then they were called again by the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin, they were called council. They were elders. On, uh, verse 23, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. What they had said was, do not preach again in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Then let's continue. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. They did what? They raised their voices in prayer. Now, can you ask your friend? How do you pray? See where who are unaom by ille ille style ya. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here. You know me. You know everything about me. You know my needs. Sit onane usot. And then you're done. Two uh, two minutes. We are praying for the country, right? When I say, my God, you know this country, Kenya. And all the 47 counties, 291 constituencies, 1,440 um, wards. I don't know whether they have increased. And then you come down. Just handle that. You're done. And you're like, Oh, Jesus. Oh. And you're like, Sinisha, kwanza ni menda mpaka county. How do you pray? Then you are like, yani watu wanalia? Do your country? Hey, okay. Come and see. This is wonderful. Right? How do you pray? But here we are told, after these people, they came from prison. These people were not, were not worried about the prison. But when they heard that they were told, do not preach about Jesus. Msionge kuhusu Yesu. Praise the Lord. Go to verse 18. Acts 4, 18. The Bible says, Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. That is what moved these people to cry. Oh, lakini kanisa ya sikuizi. Kama uongei na watu. Suko po wa zikaro. Kuna mtu anakusumbua. Oh my, kanisa yetu inakuanga. Akunanga stress. Amen. But these people raised a cry because they were told do not speak about Jesus. Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was in them. Glory to Jesus. So the reason why you are not able to hear Jesus simply is because you don't have the Holy Spirit. I don't defy that. But kama unaona ya kwamba hawezi kushare Jesus. And it's not in your interest. Na unapenda mahali ambapo watu hawa sumbuliwi. It's because you don't have the Holy Spirit. You have to stay behind mahali ambapo umejificha. But one thing that we find common with the people that are filled with the Holy Spirit is that they are blazing. They are on fire. They want everyone to hear and to see, to experience Jesus. Praise the Lord. Watu wangapi kuwa nasema Ashauri yao Kwani Kwani lazima mimi ndiyo Nitawahubiria Wezu kasema Lakina jua watu wengi kuwa nasema Everyone to mind is on But it's your business To share Jesus Praise the Lord So verse 24 When they heard this they raised their voices together in prayer to God Sovereign Lord they said You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servants, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed Herod and Pontius, Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed. They did what your power and your will had decided beforehand should happen. 
Now, Lord, consider their hearts or their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. So what are they praying? We are in verse 30, verse 29. To speak your word in great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Verse that one. Can someone read verse that one? After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. Was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Again, the Holy Spirit filled them. He brings another level of power that they spoke boldly. Praise the Lord. The reason why the early church was able to preach Jesus and they were going through persecution. Do you, do you know what is persecution? It came to a point when um, Herod, the rulers of these areas, and also the Roman rulers, they started to arrest Christians and they will put them in the arena, what we call the Olympic arena, and they will release lions and the lions will attack these people and they will celebrate as people get devolved. They will say, these people that have come to change our government, these people that have brought a different teaching, let them experience, you know, that was persecution. Praise the Lord. You are there, seated on the auditorium, looking at people being devolved. Praise the Lord. Today, if such a thing happened, I bet perhaps not even the pastor will be here. Amen? I need the grace of God. That unaskia, unapeleko kwa the study ambayo kuna lions. Na unaulizo, you have two options. You renounce Jesus and we let you go. Or you keep saying that Jesus is Lord and you meet the lions. Praise the Lord. I, don't, I feel tempted to ask how many people will persevere that, but I don't want to ask because many will lie. Does that mean it ends? It ends. It ends. Watch a lion, doggy, hapa. Ile naitua German Shepherd. Ingi hapa wambiwe. Kila mtu aseme Yesu ni buwana, tunachilie. Unasikia si mtu anaweza backslide na anaokoka tena. So nita backslide hapa. Nienda niokokee wapi? Mbele. <laughs> you know. eh, si Mungu ni wa second chance. Ama ni aje wase. Many chances kwanza. So ukipatana naye wa pale mbele tena, unasema we God, it's only the third time. Si hata hata Peter li ku denounce three times and you used him mightly. You used him mightly. His shadow was healing people. What about me? Only true. <laughs> you know. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's true. Amen. The other way of persecution was that Christians kunai mafuta huwa inawasha zile vijiti za zamani. We call them torches. Mishaona hizo movie kijiti kinawekwa uh, kinguo and then there is that oil and then inawaka. So they take those torches. So Christians used to be applied that oil and they will be put on the walls and they will be lit up. So people will be burning as they provide light. Amen? So imagine now niwe unafungwa kwa hiyo kiblanketi then you are soaked with the oil. Now where's your muizi? Praise the Lord. And then, your sister is lit. Unasikia venye amepiga kelele. Praise the Lord. And still, mtu anakuja na kwambia. Sema, yesu ni buwana, ni wakishi. Many of us here, you will say, no, I don't know him. Nilikuwa nasikia. Sinono hui umechoma? Hui umechoma kwanza? Hui ndi alikuwa nasema. That is the persecution. Praise the Lord. Wengine walikuwa naenda wanambiwa, sema yesu ni buwana. 
Yesu ni bwana unasikia kahakso kanapitia kwa kichwa sema tena eh? paka kichwa inaenda tu praise the lord you know how they were killed some were beheaded and beheading si ati mtu anakuja tu anakufanya ah ni ile pole pole anakuambia we mtu will you denounce jesus there is a song that says i've heard how christians long time ago they were brought before the tyrant throne they were told to renounce jesus or if they don't renounce they'll be killed but one by one they chose to die but christ jesus they will not renounce i can hear now the angelic choir sing and say i pledge my allegiance to the lord praise the lord at that point some you are at the place where you know you are you're just flashing and saying oh my family oh you know my girlfriend oh na ndivyo tulikuwa karibu kufanya harusi eh unaanza kuona tutoto hata una tutoto ati ningekuwa na tutoto tunatembea goja 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 then all of a sudden unasema I don't know him. Amen. I have a vision of the future because you don't have the Holy Spirit. But they chose to die. We know about the John the Baptist. No, John the uh, the brother of Jesus. How did he die? He died at the old age, but he went through a few things. One, the Bible says he was boiled in oil. In a courtroom unaweka kwa nyungu wanaweka mafuta wanakuchemsha and because of the power of god and you know John the, the brother to Jesus was the pastor of Ephesian church and Ephesian church was not a joke hao watu walikuwa wanainua maombi hivi dunia inabadilika that is why we say when you look at the teaching of Ephesian you need to have the holy spirit to understand it it is the the, the highest level that you find people writing like paul paul is writing there as a doctor not as someone writing letters to encourage people he's saying that you know you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places he's saying these are your blessings because you experience them you guys you walk with the revelation of heaven then this man is boiled in oil anawaambia <laughs> Mmemaliza kunichemsha naenda kuhubiri and then they sent him to the patmos where it is known that in that area there were no people living because of the venomous venomous snakes the venom of those snakes was it bites you gone and then he's thrown there like tuone utajitoa aje huko then he writes revelation god gives him revelation at the patmos where they thought he's going to die ju alianza kusema hii ni kama pepo tunachemsha mtu na anaongea hebu mtupeni na huko praise the lord yeah unaona mtu tu ana shine kwa mafuta now imagine nani ashaishi ushago kidogo ama kwa ile kwa zile jiko za moto mawe tatu kisha ukasahau ya kwamba kuna kala moto limetoka nje ukawekelea kisigino na haishikangi moto haraka inakuanga tu kama ile unapepetea tu kanashika moto kanashika kanashika kisha wakati utasikia uchungu haipoi kama ni chai unaweka mguu hapo kwa anything cold unaweka huyo yo 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 yeah? you know that how how many people have ever experienced that kama shika moto na hakapoi wacha mkono hapo kisigino unakimbia unawika oh hii si experience ya bontao kama uko bontao unajua hii inakupita tu lakini kama shika nini waambiwe my, my sister will you speak about jesus ama tuweke hii mgu yako kwa moto praise the lord so only the holy spirit will help you to share jesus and here we are told the place where they were it shook shook and they were filled with the holy spirit 
How is your prayer life? What do you pray? God, I pray for money. God, I pray that you may help me, help my family, help, help me to be a good man. All you need to ask is to ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Your desire should be the Holy Spirit. You will become sharper, more powerful, and you will move within the time as the Holy Spirit moves. I conclude by saying baptism by fire. What happens? For your mouth and your tongue to be able to speak Jesus, it need to receive another tongue that is called tongue of fire. Praise the Lord. If your tongue is going to speak powerfully, you cannot speak with your own tongue because it will gossip. Your tongue will speak about evil of people. Your tongue will speak about how people are crooked. Your tongue will doubt. It will say that I'm not sure. I can trust you. But when another tongue that we call the tongues of fire comes upon you, your tongue touches the tongue of fire and it's translated into a tongue of fire. And the words that you start to speak comes out as fire. Consuming the works of darkness. Destroying the foundations of evil. Breaking the barriers. And setting people free. You now speak words of healing. Destroying and decimating the work of Satan. That he cannot rise up again. You cast out devils and they leave without looking back. Praise the Lord. I got a revelation this week that there is a way we can pray and we kill ourselves. Praise the Lord. If someone comes here possessed with evil spirits, I know the easiest way to start is to, to call the name of Jesus, right? Jesus in the name of Jesus. Oh, and we become crazy here. Kila mtu na yake. Wengine wakona Bible wanafanya wepepo. This is the word of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the easiest thing is to operate in the spirit and cast out that devil. That devil. That demon. In the name of Jesus, I command you to live. And depending on the power that you have received, it will obey or disobey. Amen. My desire is that God will quench me with his power. When I have known the fountain of this power is the Holy Spirit. I want him more. I want him all the time. I want the Holy Spirit to fill me. Praise the Lord. I want him to fill me that I, I, I don't need to ask you about your story. Because he will tell me about your story. I want the Holy Spirit to fill me to the point where I don't have to come here and, and, and pray my voice hoarse. Yet I can speak. I can, I can command. Some of us, we have been destroyed from our homes. People have just driven us out by hatred, by pain. All you need is the Holy Spirit. And you enter there like the King of Kings. Praise the Lord. Because you carry the power of the King of Kings. Ephesians chapter, chapter, chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says, For we may understand the power that we have received in Christ Jesus. The inheritance of his righteous people. The power that resurrected Christ from the dead. Praise the Lord. When you have received this power, you walk into your homestead like a boss. Hallelujah. And you start speaking there in, in, in different tongues and you tell the Lord, this place, it shall be the source of, the, uh, of life in Christ Jesus. You walk in there. And the works of darkness recognize you. And they start to say, what do you have against us? And you're just a man. The Bible says, even Elijah was a man like you. He was a man like, alikuwa anaomba mkate kama wewe. Anambia mama, tafadhali kwanza nipikia na sikia kama nitakatika tumbo. Praise the Lord. Kwanza nipikie mkate wa kwanza. He was a man like us. He will go and say, I command that in three and a half years, no rain will ever come here. He will command fire from heaven to consume not only the altars, but the armies of evil are rulers. The Bible says, Elijah was a man like you. What did he have different? That 
And we serve the same God. He was, he is, and he shall be. He is yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. And that is what we can trust God. He changes not. He's true. So if he used Elijah, he can use you. And, and, and the beautiful thing is that now we have received more power in the Holy Spirit. So when you're walking as a weakling, it's because you've chosen to walk that way. Today I choose to seek after the Holy Spirit. To be filled more and more. Let my prayers all the time. You find me in, 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 in prayers, in tongues. You may call me mad or fanatic. But the results of my relationship with the Holy Spirit will drive you closer to me. Praise the Lord. You need to pray and ask God who promised and said in Joel that in those days I will pour out my spirit upon every flesh. And I think you are flesh. You are not a ghost. Amen. So when he Every flesh. He said he will pour out his spirit. Let me tell you my brother, my sister. God can empower you. You can walk in power. And you can do all things. All things through Christ Jesus. Let's come to the place where we are tired of living the same life. Like drunkards. Praise the Lord. What good do I have if I don't have the marking of the Holy Spirit? If I cannot help you, what good should I be preaching here? There must come a time when people will say, I need the Holy Spirit with all my life. Praise the Lord. If I start to enumer uh, enumerate experiences that the Holy Spirit have led me out of danger, they are not one or two. And this is not luck. This is not luck. Praise the Lord. This is not luck. The Holy Spirit is able to, to mark you. I've shared with you many times that I was a friend to thieves and, and, and police. Nilikuwa na shikuwa na polisi. Wakiniachilia na shikuwa na muizi. Akuna, walikuwa na operate wawili wawili. Nikitoka kwako, naanguka kwa uyu. Nikitoka kwa uyu, naanguka kwa uyu. Until I prayed and I said, God, this has to come to an end. And from 2208 to date, I've never, even when I have found myself in the midst of police in a bad situation, not when they are in peace. And thieves have never been say, told. Simama. Nasijai tolewa mbio. Praise the Lord. Sina story ya kusema nilibahatika mguili niponya. No. And I walk all the time. Even sometimes I walk at, at one. Some of you have walked very late when we are doing some things here. Not only that, many times even in town. And there are times, like last week, God revealed to me in a dream. And he showed me people, Tao, ambao alikuwa ready to steal from me in a dream. And the whole thing, the place, then that morning, because it was in the evening, I passed that place. Pale gari za kwenda uh, abasinda kuna gari za daboe muziko hapo. I passed there and I just walked nilikuwa ni mevalia um, the earbuds na skiza muziki. But I passed there and I said people may think I'm singing but I'm praying. And I went there and I said in the name of Jesus we have a covenant with the Holy Spirit. That in this life in Nairobi, I will never be robbed. I will never be arrested from uh, along my work. I will, no one will steal from me. And now in the name of Jesus, every council that is plotting that they will steal from me, 
I destroy you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. And I was praying as I walked, as I walked, going to the office. And in the evening, I passed the same place. And I declared that no counsel whatsoever is going to steal from me. Praise the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit will show you exactly what will happen. And if you don't pray and engage, utakuwa magd, utakuwa unasema, I thank God wali nibakishia koromeo. I can nasikia na iza kohoa. Lakini kila kitu, unasema, unajitia moyo sam. Wali nibakishia koromeo, I can sing to the Lord. Hallelujah! You know, wali nibakishia ni koromeo ama niko. I'm not sure. Amen? I'm telling you, if you walk in the Holy Spirit, there are things he shows you. He reveals to you. Praise the Lord. One time, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and God reveals exactly what is happening within the life of this ministry. And I'm like, you know, there are times I tell you about dreams and then I say, Iyo, sita wambia. Amen? Because there are things that when you share with you guys, you'll be like, oh no, oh, you know. There are times I've walked along this area. Nimefika kwa mosque fulani hapo nimeanza kuomba in the name of Jesus, this spirit of Islam that has come to wreak havoc. The mosques are being planted, planted in strategic places. It's a spirit, it's not the house you see, it's the spirit and they have the altar. So, and, and I was stricken by so much pain so much pain. I've shared with you about it. And I said in the name of Jesus, I counter this spirit that is attacking me with so much pain. And within no time, it was lifted. Praise the Lord. After that, I come here and I meet some people who are in that religion waiting for me outside here. And there are people praying here inside. Nimetoka my prayer walk. And then I find people saying, Pasi, why are you not praying inside? No, I'm going inside. No, you should be praying inside. And I was like, how did they know that I was praying outside? I was taking a, a prayer walk. I covered eight kilometers. Nikapitia po, kwa maji, nikapita uko ju, nikaingilia tononoka, there is a mosque there. I walked, and then I come and I meet people who are not in prayers. They are seated outside here, and people are praying inside here. And I knew. Ah, they knew. Oh, they know. Because altars are spirits, they know. So, and they are like, why are you praying outside? Praise the Lord. Amen. You guys, if you can only have the Holy Spirit, the level of your operations will change. May it be business. May it be the church. We are coming into another season. We are coming into another season that we cannot operate from the knowledge of our mind. We have to depend on the Holy Spirit who will quicken us and to the right people. Philip had to be taken to the guy who was going back to, it, uh, to, to Ethiopia. The eunuch. And the Bible says, uh, the Holy Spirit told Philip, go closer to this, to this man. And he had what he was, he was reading. Praise the Lord. We can, we can operate in the spirit. Let me tell you. Amen? Amen. Oh my. Sam, is this thing correct? It is. Okay, let me be concluding. Amen? You will go at your home and you will know that the people you see are not necessarily the one you know. Because you have known them does not mean that you have really understood who they are. And it's only you who can help your family. Your relatives as much as we can, you are the one you are planted and you are taken out of this family to bring salvation. But you cannot do that without the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. There are things, altars, there are, kuna mamba mbaya nafanyika katika jamii. Na sisemi ni lazima yawe mabaya. Kuna ngome ambazo zimeinuka. And only when you have the Holy Spirit, you shall bring them down. So what do you need? Do you need deliverance or you need the Holy Spirit who will deliver? Because many people kind of like think, you know, if, if you pray upon me, that is, but you need the power. You destroy the works, the foundations from inside. 
Oh my. How I desire that people will be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. That you'll be hungry for the Holy Spirit. Hungry for the Holy Spirit. I've come to the place where I'm, I've chosen that I want him more. I want him more. More than yesterday. More than the past year. I want him more. Because when I have him more, he will enable me to do what I cannot do a thousand years. I want him more. Praise the Lord. I pray that we have people who will say, I need him more. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is not a disorderly spirit. When he comes in your life, your life will have the accuracy that you will not have when you are alone. You will be able to dissect issues, maybe the business issues, family issues, church issues, with clarity. Because the Holy Spirit is able to see beyond what we can. And when you have received the power, the things that you will do, you will leave a legacy in this world. Praise the Lord. People will know that there was a man and he did so much because he was empowered. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old. If the Holy Spirit comes and fills you, you will be able to move with speed in the things of God. Glory to Jesus. May you rise up, rise up, rise up now, we pray. You might be here and you're saying, this, new, uh, this, this is new news. Praise the Lord. I've not heard this. I don't know how even to ask for the Holy Spirit. I don't know how a person prays for the Holy Spirit. I don't know. But this is what the word of God says. Test me and see. Prove me and see that I am sweet. I am good. Glory to Jesus. Romans 12 and verse 2. The Bible says, and you shall be able to know what is good, what is perfect. When you test the Lord, he says, I'm not afraid that you may put a test. Gideon tested God and said, if you are God, I put this skin here and I want it to be wet in the morning and all other areas will not be wet. And it was so. And he came and said, God, do not be angry with me. I want to test you one more time. Now this skin should be dry and all other grounds will be wet. And God did exactly that. And he said, for sure I have known that you are God. God is saying, try me and see. Try me and see. You are here and you are saying, I have not never experienced the Holy Spirit. Because the way he has been represented, people are taking, you know, they, 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 they try to pretend they have the Holy Spirit. And they have defiled the name of the Holy Spirit. But say today that God, I want to try you. I want to try you, Lord. I want to try you. I want to try you. Open up your mouth and, and, and start praying. The Bible says, and when they prayed, the place where they prayed, there was a shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were empowered. And they were able to share the word of God boldly in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want you, Holy Spirit. We want you, Holy Spirit. To fill us this night, this afternoon. To fill us, oh God. Flow in us with your power. Flow in us, Jesus. Open up your mouth. Do not fear. Because they raise their voices in prayer. As they desire the Holy Spirit. I don't know your problems. I don't know what the pain you go through. I don't know your frustrations. I don't know how your family and how your business. I don't know how your employment. I don't know how you were. I don't know the state of your heart. But the Holy Spirit is able to search you out and is able to give you peace. He's able to empower you. He's able to lift you up. He's able to make you stand in the name of Jesus. He says, then in those days, my spirit shall be poured upon every flesh and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when they have received the Holy Spirit, they will be filled with the power. And when they have received the power, they will rise up with courage. And they will speak about me in the, all the lands of Israel, in Samaria, in Jerusalem, and in Judea. And they will be my witnesses there. I have come to tell someone tonight uh, 
that there are people that will live here with another charge of the Holy Spirit and they will move with the authority and power of God. They will destroy every structure, every foundation that have are continue to be constructed upon them and they will be free. They will be set free and they will be free indeed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just start to say Holy Spirit come. Holy Spirit fill me. Holy Spirit fill me now. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Oh, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you this wonderful night, uh, this wonderful afternoon. Uh, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, to fill you in the name of Jesus, uh, to fill you in the name of Jesus. Refuse to work uh, as a Christian who is powerless. Uh, refuse to operate uh, as a powerless Christian uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, uh, may you fill your people in the name of Jesus. Uh, may you fill your people in the name of Jesus. How hungry are you for the Holy Spirit? How hungry are you for the Holy Spirit? Because when you have received the Holy Spirit, you have received all things. You have received all things. You have received the power. You have received all the revelation. You have received the, the mysteries of heaven. And you are operating power. Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. 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 He's so much willing to fill you. He's so much willing to come and dine with you. He's so much willing to come and baptize you. Ask the Holy Spirit uh, to fill you in the name of Jesus. Uh. I want you to open up your mouth. Uh, and if you're able to speak in tongues, uh, you can speak now. And if you're not able to speak in tongues, uh, you can pray in understanding. Uh, you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit. Uh, the give of the new tongues. Uh, that he may fill you in the name of Jesus. Uh, that he may fill you in the name of Jesus. Uh, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He will empower you. He will enable you. He will speak to you. In words uh, that are so deeper. Uh, in words that are so clear. In words that will set you up. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, upon them, O oh God. Fill them upon, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit. That they will not be the same again. That they will not be the same again. Oh, my Father, may you fill your people with the Holy Spirit tonight. The Holy Spirit tonight. They are changing. Their life is changing. Their life is changing. Their life is changing. There are people here that the Holy Spirit is moving in and they will be different in the name of Jesus. Their agitations will be different their desires will be different. Their, 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 their hearts will have the power of God. They will receive clarity in their mind. And they will be moved. That their mouth will be captured. And they will speak the things of God. They will prophesy in the name of Jesus. They will prophesy in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord, that these wonderful people, they are not leaving this place the same way. They are going out with your power, with your anointing Holy Spirit. Cry out to the Lord. He is the giver of all flesh. He gives the, the Holy Spirit. Just desire Him too strongly. The Bible says, and desire the Holy Spirit. Desire the Holy Spirit. Desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Desire that He may come and dwell in you. And the apostles went to Samaria and they laid their hands upon, upon His people desire the Holy Spirit as worshippers you come forward and we just say Holy Spirit come and flow Holy Spirit come and Let's just come and sing the song just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you Holy Spirit fill fill me Holy Spirit fill me In the name of Jesus
Holy Spirit come and flood in this place. Holy Spirit come and quench us this wonderful afternoon. Come and flood in this place. We want you Lord. We need you Holy Spirit. We need you Holy Spirit. here and you're saying that I've never experienced the gift of the Holy Spirit. I've heard people say that the Holy Spirit helped them. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. He gave them counsel. He revealed and you have never experienced these realities. And perhaps you're saying I would like to try this God. I'll ask you where you are to raise your hand and I will pray with you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who wants to experience the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's your promise that you shall fill us with the Holy Spirit. That you shall pour out your Spirit upon every flesh. And that everyone who have desired you, they will have you. You say that we desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's our hearts, oh God, that we have accepted to be filled in. We ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill everyone who have raised his and her hand in faith may you release your Holy Spirit upon them start to renew their way of thinking renew their way of operations Father let them know that you have come through in them Holy Spirit of God take over fill them let them overflow with the glory of the Holy Spirit. I ask you Lord that from this point you walk with them teaching them the mysteries of heaven concerning the Holy Spirit. Let them God go through transformations that Lord they will not remain the same as they came this morning. They are leaving this place empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit. They will have a different encounter and they will have clarity in the likeness of their mind. They will know indeed that the Holy Spirit of God. They will be empowered, O oh God, to speak about you in every scenario and situation. God, we ask you to soak us with the Holy Spirit. We bless you, Lord, and we give you praise. By faith, we've opened our hearts. And by faith, we acknowledge receiving the Holy Spirit. Let there be your Father difference that even ourselves will be amazed by what you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can have our seats in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. We are concluding. And today we've been sharing about being in filled with the Holy Spirit. But also, this coming Sunday, please come early. I will be sharing about the few steps you need to take as the Holy Spirit works in you. Praise the Lord. The, the right journey to be filled with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit has started working in you. And I will be speaking about baptism. Praise the Lord. Today we've spoken about baptism with the Spirit and fire. Sunday I will be speaking about the right processes. Praise the Lord. And also I'll be sharing more detailed about operating in the power of God. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and do you well. Before I invite uh, Maureen 
and, and Cairo to help us in raising our resources. I'd like us to give you some news of where we are. We are coming to the month of June and uh, we have continued to engage with all the parties involved with the owners of this property and also with the new um, landlord of the property that we want to lease. Um, we have decided that we are going to lease a new property that is uh, about 25 feet by 50 feet. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the following are the agreements we've made that um, that property, we are going to lease it in a period of three to five years, depending on how we want. Uh, within our contracts, we're going to factor in that um, in three to five years, uh, three years renewable, and we've been granted a chance uh, to put slabs, as, as many as we want. So we will put several slabs. Why? Because uh, we don't have bigger space on the sides. So what we intend to do is that whatever we have, the facilities we have, like the Sunday school classes and um, the manager's offices and our offices will go on the second floor. Praise the Lord. The room will be bigger than this one. Um, so we are doing the first room, the hall. Then the first floor will be having two rooms that can be used in small uh, groups that can be divided by walls that can be moved so that we can have two, two halls. Praise the Lord. So that will serve as an overflow when we will have filled the lower room so people can be able to go to the upper room and they can see whatever is happening through the screens because we may not be able to do much with that. So we'll put up screens when the time comes and we are more than uh, we can sit in the lower room. Then we shall put another slab and we shall put the offices in the second floor. We'll have a studio <coughs> that will be uh, used as a broadcasting point. Then we'll have an office. We'll have several other offices to help us be able uh, to serve people in a, a very effective way. Praise the Lord. Um, as we do all that, we have uh, been factoring in uh, the resources that we're going to use by, <clears throat> so the, the landlady of this place had asked me to remain, that we renew our contract, but she had one condition. And this condition, we may not be able to keep it. That every time she comes, she needs to find the gate closed. Every time she visits, every time she has to, she finds the gate closed. That is a very um, veiled way because if we close the church, how will people access the church? This is not a personal, private business. It is a public place. Amen? Anyone can come in. We don't have ownership. Uh, we are only uh, stewards. We can all say that this is my, my church, so you should not come. I don't have the right to tell you that this is not your church. Amen? So what we do, we are just administrators. So we cannot be able, we cannot afford to close the gates uh, at all times. We need people to access this place. And that is why we had taken a lot of precautions to put all our instruments up there. And there is a lot of, um, we had done a, a lot of uh, metal work there with those strong metals that when we close there, even if you're just here and something happened, before people access that place, uh, it's quite fortified. Praise the Lord. So we had taken precautions so that even, um, you know, theft is, is, is more um, encouraged <clears throat> when people can see what you have right? So that is why we had taken all the sound instruments up there that even you don't know what we have. You don't know whether they're expensive instruments or not. So, and especially because we, we've been hosting a blaze here, we know kuna kuja watu ambao wameokoka na wala wajaoko. So mtu anaiza kuja angalia jue 
or oh, our to work on a system in a But without saying, it doesn't really uh, create that room unless you just want to come and, and explore. Praise the Lord. So by that, I told her that we cannot afford that. And then she told me that um, she will not cancel the vacate notice. It will still be valid, but dormant. Until she finds the gate open, she activates it. You know, you only Kali sana. Amen. Yani mtu anakushikia chini bwana asifiwe. That sam kama umefungua mlango i document iko valid. Kama umefunga haiko valid. Don't you see Satan at work there? Praise the Lord. Because if you cannot access us, how do you access freedom from bondage? So it's kind of like told in in in, in um, <clears throat> where we've read Acts chapter 4 and verse 18. And the Sanhedrin told them, do not speak about and do not teach in the name of Jesus. Just like that. Mujifungie, watu wakai saidile na nyimkai. I told her, unfortunately we are not taking in that. And uh, thank you. We appreciate. And when we are speaking with her, she was very, very sick. And she's saying that munga menitokea meniambia. Nimefanya vibaya. Na hii ni punishment. So, nyini watu wa mungu. Nimejua nyini hamtuminga uvu zingine ni za mungu. She had man, many stories. Nikamambia sasa mama, hata ukilia. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not here for personal business. I cannot help you. I'm here to do the will of God. And if you're not within that will, I have no business with you. Thank you. God will heal you. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot stay another time here. Praise the Lord. So that is the position we have. And now I was speaking about the financial implications. And um, we have estimated that uh, all that uh, reorganizing ourselves will cost us about 800,000. Rough estimate. Uh, for the next five years, we are going to be paying 240 per year because we are paying 20,000. Here we have been paying 50,000. So 20 is way better given that we will access several floors. Uh, we will have more space. Praise the Lord. Uh, 20 per year is 240. Five years is 1.2. Adding about 800 uh, of putting up those, those um, uh, structures, we find that we might end up in five years costing about 2 million. Um, on the other hand, if we stay here for the next five years, we shall have paid three million. Praise the Lord. And we are limited in all ways. We are limited that we cannot change any structure here. We are limited that we cannot expand this church. We are limited that we cannot open the gates. We are limited that um, sometimes we have, we've had to struggle with this basis of flowers. Sometimes um, even arranging those blocks of stones you know now it becomes a bit challenging so in the long term we save one million and peace amen now why are we taking that option spending that much rather than looking for land that we can develop the future of this church is not that small uh, in, in five years, I think we will have surpassed capacity to have a thousand people. Because that place, we are estimating that in a 24 feet by 50, if this place we can handle about 100, 115, that place can handle about 300. Okay? 150, comfortably seated in 24 by 50, um, and 150 more. So that is 300. 300, we can have three services, or e even two. But I've been working with projections of three services. That will be about 900 people. Those three, uh, I mean 900 people, <clears throat> will be enough to buy their own place. One hour, Nabi, Walenda Wakasema, the place has become small. Give us the permission to expand. And so, the next place I'm looking after there is a place where I can hold about 3,000 people in one city. And so if we do three services, 
it will be about 9,000. So I, I found that buying a plot, it will cost us about 6 million for us to be there. Because we buy about 2 million, we invest about 2 million, that is 4 million, and other expenses. The, two, uh, the 800 is coming because of uh, already their walls, and we are going to build up upon those walls. Praise the Lord. So, and I found we will spend 6 million, and then we will still be in the same problem when we want to expand, and we have spent more. Yes, it's our property, but in the long term in, uh, of five years, uh, looking the short term of five years, we can save 4 million so that we get a bigger land, 150 feet by 150 feet, the smallest or larger than that, and that can be able to carry about 2,500 to 3,000. And then from there, we can put several floors. We can put one hall, two halls, 3,000, 3,000. Um, I'm trusting God that um, uh, he can help us to get bigger than 150. Then if we can be able to handle 3,000 people, or more than that, uh, around three to 4,000, then we can be able to uh, wait, and now we got to 50,000 seater later. Praise the Lord. So those are the projections I'm having. Uh, they are tough because they require a lot of cash, um, but two million, God can provide. Amen? He's provided more, even when we did not have much. He's provided from uh, December 2021 to now we've been able to raise in offerings and gifts about 2.8 million. Praise the Lord. Going in different programs. And then at that point, you can realize that we were more limited than we are today. And so I'm trusting God that 2 million is not much in a period of five years. So we are starting slowly. Uh, as, as God will lead us. So that landlord was used of God to bring down his one bedroom. We'll be visiting there with all of us so that at least we can um, have a look at it. Uh, so it's God working and, and orchestrating many things. But I trust that God is going to use you to become a great help and blessing to us as also we are looking forward to invest heavily in the kingdom not in people, but in him, in God. Praise the Lord. Our wealth has not come from donations. It has come from us investing in the kingdom and God repaying us. Even in times that we did not expect, God has continually supplied our needs. Praise the Lord. So you can align yourself to become a blessing. And when we are speaking about blessing, we are speaking heavily, being a, a, a blessing. Buona sifiwi. Si mnajua hapa huwa atufanya harambe kubwa. Atuuzi kuku na matunda, matunda. Okay. Eh? Yeah. Kiswahili sijui ilitoka wapi. Anyway. <laughs> you know, we, we just say that be a blessing and that becomes our thing. And that is what I want to uh, encourage the church and we are building on those bases, this church. It will never become a marketplace. Amen? It will never be a place where nakwambia Bwana Kiremi nimekuja na koti nani atanunua 50 30 and that no so this is a place whatever god has put in your heart just give amen and i believe that the lord will bless us thank you son amen so this announcement that i am making is just to help us be able to realize uh, where we are at this point so in um, a few days. The last Sunday that we are going to be here is on 25th. I believe it will be on a Sunday. Then from there we shall bring down what belongs to us and we shall move into that place. So we are embarking on making sure that we have a ready place that can accommodate us as we work on the progress of that place. And if we will not have been able to do much uh, within that time, we shall still have fellowship for a time in our house We've agreed with my wife that uh, our room can contain all of us here. Um, so that is where we shall do our fellowship for a period as we work on that place, which will be way better than where we are. Praise the Lord. So I pray that uh, the Lord will help you, uh, will quicken you, 
we are more than enough to do that work. I've, I've worked with people who have faith, not people who have money. Because faith is more than money. Faith can cause people to do incredibly great things if only they put their faith in Christ. Praise the Lord. So with that, I think um, I would request Carol and Maureen to come and help us give, uh, uh, give our offering. And uh, I believe that uh, the Lord will bless you. We shall keep on sharing in Jesus' name. Karibu Nisan. Hallelujah. And as we sang on that day, we can only do what? We can only imagine. And God has been faithful as we have heard from Pastor Moses. He has shown us that his word is true, that he is able to give us much more than we have asked for or even imagined on such a day we were on the imagination part, on the imagination of the place that we are right now is like this and like this. It has a structure like this. We could only imagine which the next, sorry, what the next home would look like. But I thank God because he is faithful to his word. And I know he is also going to be faithful to you this wonderful afternoon as we give back to him who has blessed us with resources let me switch on my phone. So I invite us in this wonderful moment that we may give unto the Lord as he has blessed us. We are going to give our offerings, those that are giving through the MPESA. The pay bill number is 4043755. On the account you are going to indicate whether it's your offering, your tithe, or probably you are giving towards the Nuru place, I know God has blessed you and you want to give back to him. Um, if you have cash, I don't know. Where is Peter? <laughs> Peter is the one who, who usually comes with the offering basket and keeps it near here. Thank you, Moses, for the man from space. <laughs> Thank you, the man from, from space, for bringing the offering basket in front here. So if you have your offering in cash, you are invited that you may give it joyfully in the presence of the Lord, even as the rest of us continue doing the same on, on phone. It is a beautiful thing. I thank God because he has given us so that we may be able to do things in our lives and that also we may be able to give back to him. And having done that, we can joyfully announce that it has been a beautiful day that the Lord had made for us, that the Lord had made even for you who has been following us online. And as we come to a close, we can only imagine the faithfulness of God and to them that continue to trust in him. He says that there is a reward. So from us here at the Good News Mission, to you who is here physically and to you who is watching us online, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. I request that we be upstanding this moment even as we share in the words of grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord days without number. Amen. Have a blessed afternoon, a blessed morning, blessed evening from wherever you are watching us from. We speak God's blessings unto your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.